<clears throat> What's good, everybody? It's um, your boy again. It's Devrel Davis, and we're talking a little bit of Stream Rules, um, WWE Stream Rules 2019 that took place in Philadelphia over this past weekend. Um, wasn't able to review it a little bit sooner. Today is Wednesday. Um, happened on Sunday. Um, got a little bit busy between Monday and Tuesday, so I wasn't able to review it as soon as I wanted to. But the good thing about that, we also went through Raw and we also went through SmackDown. And I went to a house show on Monday. I'm um, over here in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about everything else. Um, my my um, two days of meeting certain wrestlers and stuff like that. But um, let's get back to the review of our 2019 um, Extreme Rules. Now... In my opinion, um, I went to WrestleMania this year, great WrestleMania, um, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd definitely give Mania like an 8.5, I had a few botches in there, especially with the women's match at the end of the main event, but for history being made, and two things as far as history being made, Kofi went being the first um, African American to be the WWE champ, um, officially recognizes that, even though we had The Rock as the champ one time. And um, also the women's um, main event in the Mania itself. So that, to me, made Mania 8.5. But my point is that Extreme Rules was probably the best pay-per-view this year besides WrestleMania. Um, it was better than Royal Rumble. And the pay-per-views this year really lackluster, really didn't have a lot of um, to give or to offer as far as um, substance and everything like that. But... Extreme Rules was a little bit different. Um, it was a B-rated um, uh, uh, pay-per-view, but it delivered like an A. So I'm um, giving this. Um, I'll give you my score at the end, but let me just run through, um, give a little quick review. Um, let's start off. Um, I didn't see the pre-show, um, but I did hear about Nakamura's quick win. And uh, by the way, I met Nakamura on Monday. Um, Nakamura's quick win over... Um, the defending champ Finn Balor, and now that leads me to, to wonder: um, Is Finn Balor going to join um, the club now that he doesn't have the belt? Um, uh, him and AJ Styles and the rest of the club team up. That would be something awesome. I like to see him as a heel. It's about time for him to change change up. And um, he made a cryptic um, uh, remark on his twi Twitter. He just had a picture of himself and he had the words "bye bye." Not sure if he's leaving take some time off from the WWE or leaving the WWE altogether that's speculation but maybe it's just bye bye to his character as Finn Balor the regular person maybe he's gonna be now the demon and maybe he's gonna be um doing a heel turn okay um so Nakamura is a new champ um to me something like that should have been on a regular show maybe move a match or two maybe could have done the Usos and Revival on the the um the pre-show um Usos are, are pre-show um kings or uh, maybe you could have put the um what's the other match you could have put there um that's probably the only I mean the Dolphin KO was so quick but we'll get into all that so let's move on to the regular card um I didn't see a 205 I think Drew got um Gulak um retained his title and kept his title and he moved on and he's still the um 205 world champ um Let's move on to the first match, and this surprised the hell out of me. Um, I expected this to be either one of the last two matches, but this was actually number one. And in my opinion, this was the best decision WWE made all year so far by putting this match on first to start the pay-per-view. It's like having Ricky Henderson bat lead off and hit a home run. Um, pretty much, um, you had The Undertaker. Um, the interests were great. Um, let's, 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 let's talk about that. Um, uh, Shane, Drew came down, um, 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 Roman, of course, a heat magnet, um, good heat, bad heat, whatever, he's just gonna get the crowd up, because he's such a magnet, um, uh, then Taker entrance, and that, to me, got the Philly crowd ready, and whoever made that decision, let them make a lot more decisions, hopefully that was Heyman, um, let them make a whole lot more decisions, because Heyman's running the show now, especially for Raw, um, Taker came down. Taker, um, look good. So for one botch he did with him trying to pick up Shane for the for the Tombstone Power Driver, but the first time. 
But Taker looked good. And you need Taker, if you Taker decides to wrestle still for the rest of this year, or maybe even to next year, he needs to be carried this way in tag team matches where he's not taking the, the brunt. He's not doing um, pretty much everything that, like, he did against Goldberg. And then you have those stinkers against Goldberg. But if you have Taker in this type of fashion, I'm A-OK -okay to watch that match. He was so, he was into it. The big dog was being the big dog. Drew McIntyre looked like a freaking star standing face to face against um, Taker. Pretty much the same damn height. Taker's not seven feet. He's six, like more like six six, six eight, six seven in that range. Drew McIntyre's legit six five, might be six six, and they look like freaking stars standing next to each other face to face, and that was amazing. That was a great shot. Um, another highlight of that match is watching um, Taker. Um, facing the hard camera, doing the sign like this, and Drew McIntyre standing behind him, getting ready to give a Claymore kick, and um, and then uh, uh, freaking Roman intercepting him, spearing him into next week. That was awesome in my opinion. Great match all around. Shit. One more thing, Taker took a lot of bumps, um, which to me was 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 amazing. Uh, Roman didn't even take bumps in this match as much as Taker took it. Taker took it off the the, the table. Taker took it off the um the, the 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 coast to coast, and and Shane was just a beast. Shane did the elbow off the, 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 the on the off the top rope onto the table. Did the um coast to coast off the top rope from one end of the ring to the next. Man, that was an awesome match. I was amped for that match. I was actually watching it at work. Don't tell nobody I was watching it at work, and it was awesome. It was amazing. I was like, listen. I can't check you in right now. I have to finish watching this match. As you know, I work for a hotel. All right. Um, crowd was in the crowd. was hot for it. Um, I think the, the we're going to move on to the second match, but I think the way they spaced out everything, boom, hot match. Boom, let's tone it down. Maybe you want to go get something to drink, eat, use the bathroom, whatever. They had the Usos versus the Revival next, which in my opinion was a good match. I think they went on a little bit too long. Um, should have got to a point a little bit quicker. Um like I said, they could have put Nakamura and Finn Balor, the IC belt being exchanged on the main card. To me, they devalued the IC belt by not doing that, by having it on the pre-show. But the Usos versus the Revival, good match all around. Can't complain. Um, pretty much, um, pretty much, the Revival looks strong. Um, they're the best tag team besides the Usos, and especially on Raw. Um, and they they treat them like the best tag team, and they won. And I, there's not much more I can say about it. Now, if Taker and Roman's match wasn't the match of the night, I'm gonna go with this: um, Alistair Black versus Cesaro. Quick, um, quick uh, side note: Met Alistair Black, shook my hand at my local gym, um, Crunch, um, in Poughkeepsie, uh, on Monday evening. Him and Selena Vega was working out. Um, Went up to him when he's leaving at the end and said, hey, I like your match against Cesaro. Um, humble dude, very nice about it, shook my hand. Great dude, all around dude. Side note, just wanted to mention that real quick. Alistair, big ups to you. Good luck with the rest of your future, rest of your career. Same thing to you, Selena Vega. All right, so moving on. Alistair Black versus Cesaro. They made Alistair Black look like a freaking star, which he deserves to be. I think he's one of the next rising stars, if not um, a good vocal point in the company coming up for the next five to 10 years. Um, Alistair Black um, came out, love his entrance. His entrance is just, might be top, easily top three, top five, top three. Might be the best one in the business right now. Um, Alistair's in-ring ability is awesome. Same thing with Cesaro, so I knew these two was gonna match up perfectly. Um, it was a great back and forth match. Um, Alistair took a lot of offense from Cesaro, but rightfully so because Cesaro is a beast. Cesaro also took a lot of offense back from Black, um, but in the end, he caught the Black Mass at the end and laid out on the end for the um, one, two, three, and Alistair got the win. And my opinion, if, like I said, if Taker's match wasn't the match of the night, this was the match of the night right there, and this is something you should go back and watch if you missed. Now let's move on to Bliss versus Bliss. Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross versus Bailey. Now, um, I'll leave a picture, or I'll try to put a picture, edit a picture in. I met Bailey <laughs> Sunday night, well, which was Monday morning, um, at my hotel. She um, she came in 
Um, so I work for a Marriott. Um, in case you didn't know, um, I'm an overnight auditor and um, MOD, and um, I check in a lot of people. So a lot of wrestlers stay at my hotel uh, every now and then because if they doing a match in our civic center, they will stay in my hotel for the most part. So um, she came in probably around 2 a.m. and she was graceful enough. I, I checked in and everything. Graceful enough to take a picture with me um, at work, and 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 I was I was definitely um. Definitely grateful for that, and Bailey, big up to you in your career. Great person. Um, didn't give me a hug. Want a hug next time I see you? You are the hugger, but I knew you were tired, so I didn't want to bother you for that. All right, so let's move on to the match. Um, Bailey defended her title, um, SmackDown Women's Women's title against Bliss and Cross. Um, I thought it was gonna be some type of shenanigans where uh, Mrs. Um, Boss, um, Sasha Bank gets involved or whatever, reunites with Bailey. But I mean, you know, it was a two on one. The writing was on the wall. It seemed like it made sense, but they didn't go that way. They made Bailey look very strong. She had uh, Alexa in some type of um, headlock while having um, Nikki Cross. No, Hacken Martin Five is not a headline. My apologies. Like whenever you say the A L E. X I A word, my that responds, my fault. Let's just keep it at Miss Bliss and Mrs. Cross versus Bailey. So, Alexa, uh, sorry, don't say nothing. All right, there you go. All right, Bailey had Miss Bliss in the headlock while having Mrs. Um, Cross in the, um, what she told me was called the Indian deadlock. Um, I asked her what was that, i never seen her in her repertoire, she just busted out tonight and it was kind of awesome, it was a great move, go back and watch that if you can. Um, only thing they made Miss Bliss and Miss Cross look very weak, so in my opinion they need to break those two up now, because they had to lose the two of them, which Miss Bliss was a former, like, three-time champ, and they had her look like absolutely Nathan, and Miss Cross, who's an up-and-comer, should be pushed a little bit stronger, not not made looking that weak, but they did, and um, Bailey um, looked strong. So, to me, in my opinion, Cross and Bliss need to go their separate ways. Um, Miss Bailey definitely tops, um, definitely won a championship, kept it going. Now, another runner up for um, match of the night was the Strowman versus Lashley match, which that was the match I was actually watching when um, Bailey came in. And I told her, she asked me what match I'm on now because I told her I'm actually watching Extreme Rules right now. <laughs> she drove three hours from Philly. And I, I was actually watching it because I work overnight. And I was watching Strowman versus Lashley, Lashley match when she walked in. Now, um, their last encounter when they ran through the stage and everything was pretty awesome. Um, um, pretty much... Um, it made you wonder what they was gonna do at this no holds bar match and um, falls anywhere match. So um, they tore down the house. They, I mean, it's pretty much what we expected from uh, two big guys just tearing out, just destroying the place. You expected carnage all over the place, which this is what we got. They fought in the stands. They fought up. They went up top. They went everywhere. Um, went on pretty long. So like, if they had cut the time between the Usos revival and a little bit of time between this Strowman and Lashley match, you could have pushed. Nakamura and Finn Balor onto the regular card, but um, so be it, they didn't. So Lashley versus Strowman now um, took place in the stands and ended in the stands with a power slam into the um, into what looked like a setup of, of, uh, of whatever they had, styrofoam, whatever they had in the bottom, but he power slammed them into that about 10 feet off the um, railing, and it was pretty awesome, great visual effect. He bust through the... Um, do whatever at the end of it to beat the 10 count and Strowman was your winner. Now, going forward, let's break up this this feud. Let Lashley get pushed. Let Strowman get pushed. Everybody need to be pushed. Let's have a strong roster and make the roster look good. Okay? Um, but a strong contender for match of the night, even though I'm still giving it to Black and Cesaro, might be a personal favorite of mine. Alright, um... Let's go to the Tag Team Championship match, the three-way. And um, we had Daniel Bryan and Rowan defend their titles against Heavy Machinery and um, New Day. Now, on Monday, 
like I said, I went to the house show. I got front row seats. Um, forgive me because I forgot his name, but the announcer, the ring announcer for um, for um, he was the ring announcer. Tall guy with glasses. He has a, such a long name. I wish I remember his name. First name is Victor. Anyway, um, it starts with T R A something like that. He has such a long name at the end. But I want to thank him because he's the one that blessed me with these two free tickets, um, to um the house show in Poughkeepsie. And it wasn't just tickets to be in the building. It was front row seats. I was literally on the ring. And um, like, like I said, if you want to see, go to my Instagram. You'll see all the pics there. you see all the stuff from the show. My Instagram is at the cult of fitness. And it's at the cult of fitness. That's T-H-E-C-U-L-T-O-F-F-I-N. Excuse me. I-T-N-E-S. Cult of fitness. There you go. All right, so um, gave me front row seats, so I was able to mingle and, and, and touch hands and meet these wrestlers. So I met um, actually um, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Otis himself, Tucky, um, Heavy Machinery, they came, they passed through. Um, also met um, Xavier Woods from New Day, Big E wasn't there, Big E wasn't there. So... Um, as far as the match and the extreme rules, um, Rowan and, and Daniel Bryan, I, you, you know, there was healing up. Um, the crowd was into heavy machinery big time, especially Otis and his um, antics and everything, which was expected. But if you had to pick a winner, it was New Day, six times, six time world champs, tying um, the Usos with six apiece. Um, heavy machinery showed good, especially Otis. Um, but it's not their time yet. Um, I had to put it back on New Day, and now Daniel Bryan um, might get back into the main event scene. Um, I doubt that he's retiring. Might shed the weight of Rowan. To me, I think they still have a little bit more shelf life left with that, especially if you um, make him a little cult, like um, have um, Luke Harper join in, which I love, but... Seems like they might be going in the opposite direction with that. It might be um making Daniel Bryan go on his own, as you've seen on SmackDown. They kind of hinted that. So, um, my opinion, I'm not mad about it. L love to see um Daniel DB in the um main event scene, but um, I would like to see um, um, I would like to see um them as a tag team still and probably battling with New Day a little bit more because they do have good matches together. And this also protects Daniel Bryan in the long run, too. So we're going to move on. And the USA title is online now. Um, defending champion Ricochet, Mr. Flips versus AJ Styles um, and the club. Now, the club, in the beginning of this match, um, before the bell rang, jumped Ricochet, which kind of hurt him a little bit. But that's what heels do. So, okay, it looks makes AJ look a certain way, but this is what heels do, and heels were only doing what heels normally do. So I'm okay with that. Um, then in the long run, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter than what it should have been. Um, AJ won in a great match. Um, and like I'm saying, this is a great pay-per-view because there's so many, they have four legit matches that I could easily put as a match at night, but I really can't. I, I forgot about the AJ and Ricochet match, and that is really up there as far as um it being one of the matches of the night. But I'm gonna give it to Black and Cesaro still. Um, AJ Styles is new um USA champ. Him in the club. Hopefully Finn Balor comes on board and make it a stronger faction. I think Heyman wants to go now with a little bit more factions in the, in his um as the person running Raw. So. With that being the case and the club on Raw, yes, it might be a um, fashion, make it a little bit bigger, make it more than a three-man, make it a four-man, formulate the club. I'm down with that 110%. Now, I'm going to take as much time as they took in this match um, to explain it to you. The Dolph Ziggler, the KO match went no more than 15 seconds. So, all I have to say for this match KO one in 15 seconds on a stunner. That's all I have to say about it. Cut a promo at the end. The promo is longer than the match itself. Um, KO is being pushed like Stone Cold. 
Um, I'm okay with it. Moving on. All right. So next match we had um, was the Kofi versus um, versus um, uh, my boy Joe. Um, uh, I'm about to say Fat Joe, Samoa Joe, and <laughs> Fat Joe doesn't um, wrestle. Um, so anyway, um, Kofi versus Samoa Joe. Um, could I felt it was lacking. I felt. Compared to all the other matches, the um, maybe the match that I was surprised didn't bring it as much as I thought they would was the Kofi versus Joe. But this is typical for most Joe matches. Um, lately, he does all the offense, and at the end, he loses. Not a fluke, but some of the Mysterio matches are maybe a fluke and stuff like that. But um uh roll up and stuff like that um but he lost on one move so like the the lesnar championship match he lost on one at five the the kofi um championship match he lost on one um one trouble in paradise so joe is being pushed like a beast till he gets in the ring at the very end and he's treating them like a beast because he's beating them up but then the end he loses by one finisher so that's the formula for a joe a samoa joe match um 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 one of his titles on the line so um i wasn't surprised and it, it was it could have been a little bit better but um right now kofi only has one l since he's been the champ and and i like the way they're pushing kofi and i can't complain about that and i'm okay with that um moving on i mean kofi just still the champ um, moving on, um, the last match of the night, the main event match of the night, um, was the uh, mixed tag match between um, your boy, your favorite wrestler, Baron Corbin, your favorite female wrestler, um, uh, Lacey Evans, and uh, your, your power couple, um, Bayon Triple H and uh, Stephanie McMahon, uh, the couple that I'm already tired of because they shoved them down your throat so much, Seth Rollins and... Um, and Becky Lynch. So, with that being said, um, we got pretty much what we thought we was going to get. Um, a confusing match. Um, it was, um, it served its purpose for a while. Um, I guess this was all just to put the belt back on Brock because that's what ended up happening in the end, as you already know by now. But, um, as far as, um, as far as, uh, the quality of the match, I mean, it was decent. Um, the structure of the match, it was decent. Um, got what we got, but uh, I, I felt um, it was okay. I, I think it was a main event caliber, but what made it main event caliber is what happened at the end when after um, uh, Corbin hit Becky with the end of days, um, Seth lo lost his shit. And end up um table um cheering this guy till to oblivion end up hitting um uh Mr. Corbin with a chair um numerous times till he submitted and pretty much it was pinned and then that was it. But in the long run, um Mr. Rollins is also um also beat up badly in, in his match and that's what caused him to be um pretty much um exhausted by the end of his match to the point where uh, Mr. Heyman and I, I missed this part um, after New Day won their championship they went backstage and it was interviewed live and um, they were being interviewed live attempt to be interviewed live and then um, Mr. Heyman came through took the mic off from the reporter and went out on stage and was like giving his spiel like is Brock here is Brock not here am I lying to you am I telling you the truth blah 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 this and that and then they went about that, that for a little while and then um um, he went back, and then, so be it, he was telling the truth. Rock, Brock was here, and, and um, Brock was ready to to take his belt back and become the universal um, champ again. And um, that's what he did. Uh, he came down when Seth was, was done and tied, and um, pretty much um, hit him with an F5. Beat him up first a little bit. Hit him with an F5, and... That was it. 
Brock's your champ again, part timer. Um, hardly ever here, but he's been here. I've given his um dude. He's been here a lot lately this year. Maybe he might be more because the dynamics is different because Paul is running this. So maybe, and um, I'm not being sponsored by Bang, but I would, wouldn't mind being sponsored by Bang. Like you can sponsor my videos and stuff like that because I do drink Bangs every day, which is um BCAs and um caffeine and amino acid and creatine. This one doesn't have creatine in it. And CoQ10, which is good for brain health. Remember, I'm a personal trainer also besides working for um, the Marriott. And this is just a little commercial break right now. Um, just like the ad breaks that WWE now have in their Roar. Um, it's also keto friendly. So this is the coffee brand that's high in protein. The other ones are high in creatine. But if you're looking for a keto, which is the big thing, the keto word now, if you're looking for a keto coffee, try a bang, all right? Enough with the um, ad breaks, um, but I'm gonna start drinking mines. But anyway, going back to the Brock Lesnar as a champ, I'm okay with it. SummerSlam is about to um, happen in the next four weeks in Toronto. They need something like this to happen. Um, and Brock cashed in, and we don't have to worry about him cashing in no more. Only thing is now they had a number one contenders match on Raw and it was for um, who's going to be facing Brock at SummerSlam and so be it. We have Seth Rollins again, which I didn't want to see that match again. I was I would have loved to see anybody else. I would have even loved to see Randy because Randy and, and Seth was the two finalists and I was hoping for, for Randy more than anything else. I'm hoping to um, get his win back from, um, from Brock. Um, Hoping for Randy, Bobby Lashley, or somebody, somebody different, and um, they just didn't go that route, and um, it is what it is. Um, but um, the number one contender for the females belt now is Natalia, and I'm just saying, in in SummerSlam, I think the two of them are just gonna retain. I think Brock's gonna retain. I think Becky's gonna retain, um, and that's it. So that was my review for um, Extreme Rules 2019 in Philadelphia. And that was my kind of little bit of a Raw and SmackDown review for the week of that just passed. So um, once again, like and subscribe. This is the Morning Beer Podcast. Like and subscribe. I'm your boy, Devro Davis. Like and subscribe and share with a friend. Um, leave comments in the bottom. I'll answer everything as soon as possible. And um, thank you for listening. Peace. Thank you.